This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby, showing you how to install the electronics in your Reaper. Here are the different components that we used with a flying weight of 40 ounces with full installation. We're now going to install the battery. Trace your battery as far forward as you can between the spars. Usually if a Grim Reaper has center gravity problems, it's tail heavy, so you want to keep your radio as far forward as possible and keep the tail of the plane light. So cut through the E-tape and laminate with a sharp razor blade. Then you can use a box knife or a soldering iron to cut out the battery box. You want the battery box tight so that it will actually hang on to your battery and also so that there's no empty space in your plane, which makes the plane stronger and structurally more sound. Don't damage the tape and the laminate on the bottom of the wing. And as you work your way down, you can scrape out the final part with just a flat screwdriver. In this case, the battery sits totally inside the wing and is below the surface. I'm now cutting a slot seven inches back and seven inches wide for my speed control and receiver. I'm going to widen it one stroke of the soldering iron just so that uh, I have more room for wires and components. Make sure that your speed control wires will reach your battery when you cut your slot. I'm now tracing the speed control and the receiver. I want them tight in the foam. Clean out the slot with a screwdriver. I also stuff my excess wiring into these slots that I'm cutting. So I put the speed control and the receiver in and then line up the servos. I'm going to install a Velcro strap to hold the battery and the speed control in place. I also will use clear tape just so that those things cannot fall out in aerobatics. So I install the battery. I'm cutting a slit here so that the wires that come from the speed control will have easier access to the motor wires. And then I installed the receiver in the slot. You want to make sure as you decide on a location for your servos that you get them as wide as you can, but also that you have enough wire that they'll reach from the receiver to the place you're going to mount the servo. Take into consideration also is how they line up with your elevons. As you cut the holes for the servos, make sure you cut the holes small so that the servo wedges tightly into the wing. And then you're going to enlarge the hole for the brackets on the end so that the entire servo, except for the servo arm, will be below the surface of the foam. Once you've got this done, cut a slit that where the wire from the servo can be taken into the radio box. And just thread the servo wire through that slit. At this point, you're ready to bind your radio. Make sure you center the trims on your transmitter and that you center the servo arms. And then turn on your Elevon Delta mixing. And this is on your transmitter. I like to bring the push rods up through the servo arm so that the push rod is closer to the wing. And I ended up putting the push rod into the most 
the hole closest to the center on the servo and still had more throw than I expected. If you put it clear out on the end, you'll have incredible movement in the elevons, which will make the point hard to control. Use your push rod to help give you an angle for the elevon horn, and then use a hobby knife or other sharp knife to cut down through the elevon where you want the horn. Then taking my soldering iron, I poke a hole through the elevon to help glue flow up around the sides of the horn to glue it in place. You want the holes in the elevon as close to the hinge line as possible. So uh, put glue around the base of the elevon horn and press it into place and then put glue around the top and try forcing glue back down around the horn. Let's do the other side. Put glue around the base and press it up into place. And then put glue around the top, forcing it down so that the horn is glued in place. Drill a 1 16th hole in the top hole of the horn and put the post of your easy connector through the top hole. Then put the easy connector bolt and the snap on to hold the easy connector in place and the wire. I like to put the snap on upside down on the thick horns that are in this kit. It gives a better grip than putting them on so the flat side is in. Tighten the easy connectors with the radio on and give yourself about one eighth inch reflux which is with the elevons up to uh, center the plane for flight. Trim off the extra push rod with wire cutters and glue your servos in place. Glue only around the top in case you ever need to get the servo out because you have a broken gear or something. If you glue underneath, you'll have to tear the whole wing apart to get the servo out. But I do glue all, all the way around the servo. At the midpoint of the push rod, I punch a hole with a soldering iron and fill it with glue and put one of the wire guides down in and give it a little twist so that it keeps the push rod from flexing. We're now going to install the fins on the wing tips. In the center of the wing, mark a slot, a, 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 put a mark where you're going to cut a slot for the tape to go through to hold the fin in place. I found you can mount these fins either right side up or upside down, depending on which way you like the look. And also, as a side note, I put colored tape on the wing for visibility. I also did it on the fins. I apply goop glue to the end of the wing. And then press the fin into place and use the tape to hold the fin while the glue sets. I also put tape around the nose of the fin, the front, and a piece along the bottom. And I leave the tape in place, it's, but uh, it helps hold it while the glue sets. Your center of gravity is 10 and a half inches back, and which is just behind the spar. Make sure that your elevons are moving in the right direction. And in this case, I had to trade the aileron and elevator plugs in the receiver to get the correct setup for elevons. So uh, once you have the trims correct, you're ready to go out and fly your plane. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.